is the 8th of September 2020. A warm welcome to you, a good evening, hoping that you are well and you've had a fantastic day. It is now four minutes past 8 a.m. My name is Ram Maguko. We are broadcasting live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi. This is Y254. Thank you very much for keeping it here, right here. This is the stand uh, this mo this evening we have a lot in store for you including constitutional amendments a discussion in regards to the 2010 constitution remember on august 27th 2010 we as a country promulgated the current constitution so far 10 years 10 years down the line how far are we well number two revenue allocation formula Remember, in the Senate, there has been a standoff and we have been having sittings that have been continuing for the past uh, a few weeks in the Senate of the Republic of Kenya. Remember, we have the proposed change to allow counties to receive 50% of the 361.5 billion Kenyan shillings. What next for the Senate? Is the Senate actually doing its work even as we look into the counties? Remember, there have been claims by governors to shut down counties. All this and much more coming up right here on Y254. To help us understand these and much more, I'm joined by Dr. Ekuru Okot. He is uh, from Tarwe Alliance, one man who was part of the constitutional change. Uh, he has been in, uh, uh, you know, an expert in constitutional change and, uh, and a lawyer. He is also the founder of Ekuru Okot Foundation. He is one man who shall be joining us live right here on the stand. Mweshimiwa karibu sana and uh, I would like you to take your stand uh, this um, uh, evening. Now, I give you two minutes. Remember, this discussion today is all about the Kenya we want. The Kenya or the Kenya we need rather. What is the Kenya we need? Dr. Okot, you have two minutes. Okay, just for the record, I'm still the party leader of Third Way Alliance Kenya. I know you said I'm from Third Way Alliance Kenya. Uh -huh. I hope it's not uh, convenient because <laughs> of uh, the politics around it. But yes. anyway, the Kenya I want, mm -hmm. and I, I borrow this from the experience of COVID-19, the pandemic itself. I desire a Kenya where uh, that we have got a preparedness a disaster preparedness that we can also handle things uh, uh, pandemic like uh, the COVID-19. I decide a Kenya where the healthcare infra infrastructure is able to accommodate each and every Kenyan is able to every Kenyan is able to access. For example, today we're talking about the test uh, uh, for COVID costing about a hundred dollars. Uh, that is 10,000 Kenyan shillings. That's almost the average uh, wage, be, wage for, for a working Kenyan. Not every Kenyan can, can, can handle that. So I would like a Kenya where the healthcare, healthcare infrastructure uh, uh, can be accessed by every Kenyan. I want a Kenya where in the context of a pandemic like COVID-19 that the education sector does not appear to, to collapse. I want a Kenya where even with a pandemic like this, we are able to revive the economy and make sure that people are able to put food on the table. I want a Kenya where with a pandemic like this, we do not see people stealing money meant for COVID-19 patients. I want a Kenya where tribalism, negative ethnicity doesn't thrive. And I want a Kenya where we can actually build a nation state where we all belong in Kenya in equal measure, That's not the Kenya of the haves and the have nots. Thank you very much, Dr. Okot. That is his stand addressing you. What is the Kenya we need? The stand starts right now. Remember the hashtag as always is the stand KE. Make sure that you give us your take even as we continue with this evening conversation tonight right here on Y254. What do you think? What is the Kenya we need? As we begin this conversation, tag us at Y254 channel on Twitter uh, at Ram Aguko. The hashtag is the stand KE. As we, but Mushimua, uh, thank you very much for finding time to join me this uh, mm -hmm. evening, mm -hmm. tonight. And uh, as we start the debate has been there mm -hmm. about your, your your position and maybe because it is not in my place 
You are the best person to clarify this. Kenyans are asking this question. Are you still the party leader of Thadwe Alliance Kenya? Well, as far as I'm concerned, mm. there is no process that has removed me as a party leader of Thadwe Alliance Kenya or even the founder and the person who conceptualized Thadwe Alliance Kenya. So yes, I can confirm categorically I'm still the party leader of Thadwe Alliance Kenya. You're still the party people, leader? Uh, this matter is before court, it's actively before court. Mm -hmm. There are people who have attempted desperately to try and uh, um, you know, host a coup uh, in my party with attempt to removing me as a party leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not rocket science mm -hmm. because um, I'm not the first uh, such party leader for people to attempt to remove. It has happened remember, in so many remember parties. Remember there was Mudavadi, <laughs> uh, it failed, then there's <laughs> Wetangula, uh -huh. now there's a Kuro court. So maybe there will be other people, but uh, I mm. think what we need to discuss about yes, yes. in this country mm. is not these uh, cheap and simplistic attempts uh, to undermine party leadership of political parties. Mm -hmm. Because there's been an attempt to undermine any political party or any political leader mm. that takes a stand outside the mainstream uh, um, narrative uh, that, that we see in Kenya. And, and the truth for the matter is, if today you are not uh, singing the tune or dancing to the, to the, to the beats of uh, BBI, mm. you, are, you are targeted in so many respects, whether in parliament, whether in the Senate, whether outside. So I wouldn't read so much into this. I think Kenyans have bigger issues to discuss. But, but, but why you, amongst so many um, I, I, in your party, there was a, vid, uh, a video that was circulating on air, there was, a, there was a press uh, releases that were given. Uh, why you, f amongst so you, many? You know, first of all, mm. uh, I don't want to discuss much about this issue because remember, it's mm -hmm. an active matter in court. Yes. I think these are issues that will converse in court, mm -hmm. but uh, your guess is as good as mine. Mm -hmm. Yes, why? And uh, I can tell you, from the nuances I'm reading, it is just cheap and simplistic politics. It's politics of people who have been uh, compromised by other uh, political, uh, um, political, uh, political groups. Mm -hmm. And I think they think that they can try and remove a party leader like myself who has a very strong stand or supports strongly what my party believes in. So um, mm -hmm. I don't think we should really delve so much into this issue because, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. it is not a very important issue for Kenyans to know today who either leads Stadu mm -hmm. Alliance or not. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. Kenyans today want to understand, mm -hmm. for example, how do we revive this economy yeah, in yeah. This, during this pandemic? Mm -hmm. How do we address the question of nurses mm -hmm. and doctors who are about to go on strike? And what does that mean in the context of a pandemic like this? Mm -hmm. What does that mean unemployment? Mm -hmm. what, does, uh, what does it mean for education today? Uh, yeah. You know, private schools have started the new term. Uh, there are many uh, Kenyans who go to ordinary schools, public schools, who are still unsure uh, mm. when their children go to school. There are people struggling about putting food on their table. I think those are the issues that we should really those be focusing on. Those are the important on. issues affecting the lives of affecting the Manainji. Affecting the lives of Manainji. You are right, Mushimiwa, mm. mm. and uh, there are bigger th there are, there are bigger fish to fry here. Absolutely. Let's start Absolutely. with the let's start with the Kenyan Constitution. Regardless of the yes. fish, I, I still wish you the best Thank to, you uh, uh, in court. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the. Kenyan constitution. Um, Enfrico studies were conducted mm -hmm. and I was uh, going through one research and, uh, in regards to the endurance of constitutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a study that was done by professors Zachary uh, Elkins, Tom Ginsberg and uh, James Melton. Mm -hmm. Now they identified key factors mm -hmm. that help predict how long a constitution will last. Mm -hmm. uh, however, presented the facts were there. Now, the facts boiled down to two things. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. that the, uh, f what um, predicts how long a constitution can last is the design of the constitution. And number two, the environment under which the constitution operates. Mm -hmm. How does this apply here in Kenya? Um, does our design and environment provide our constitution its best footing? You know, first of all, let me say that um, in any constitution, and I know Professor uh, you know, Ginsburg very well, I uh, mm. had occasion to meet up with him, and he's mm. a very ma man I respect a lot. Uh -huh. Now, I'll tell you this, mm. you can write yourself the best constitution in the world, but if you don't respect it or even understand it, it may not even be worth the paper it's written on. So, in constitution making processes, we always think about either the letter of the constitution, and if the letter is not so clear, the spirit of the constitution. Now, that calls for one fundamental uh, aspect of constitution implementation. Mm -hmm. That is stewardship and leadership for a constitution. 
So you need people or a leadership in a country that actually believes in the constitution and safeguards the constitution, and which is why presidents, members of parliament, senators, and any political leaders will always be sworn to protect, uphold, and upheld the constitution. Uh -huh. So our environment is one where that people do not even respect the constitution. In fact, when I hear people talk about constitutional change, mm -hmm. they talk about constitutional change with themselves being entrenched into the constitution. They talk about personal interests. As long that, as their interests are served, then. Exactly. That is not what a constitution is all about. Mm. A constitution is actually a social construct, contract between the people and the state. And that's why it creates institutions. And then within those institutions, it apportions power within those institutions. And it creates a relationship with those institutions so that you can see the executive, the parliament or the legislature, and the judiciary. And of course, now it also creates independent institutions like cons commissions, such as IEBC, mm -hmm. National Coalition, Kenya mm -hmm. National Commission on Human Rights, and how those interrelate and work together, but for the people of the Republic of Kenya. And we say in a constitution, if you look from the preamble itself, we give ourselves this constitution for ourselves and to future generations. So, the design of a constitution <coughs> is also about addressing the concerns of the people. Mm -hmm. Such as, for example, we asked ourselves for the longest time before 2010 that how has power been used in this country? So how you design a constitution, how you eventually uh, constitutionalize ideas or mm. concretize those, write those ideas mm. is to address the fundamental question that people raise. What do we do with power? Mm -hmm. So Article 1, for example, of the Kenya Constitution says yeah. that sovereign authority and power vests in the people of Kenya. Okay, so you address that fundamental question. So in your designing the constitution, you are addressing fundamental problems. What do you do with the question of citizenship, human rights, mm -hmm. land and environment, yeah. leadership and integrity, finance, executive? So as a constitution builder, <coughs> you must bear in mind people's real life experiences, and people's aspirations. Looking at people's aspirations, mm. people's real life experiences, let me, let, let me narrow it down mm. to the youths because you talked about the power be belonging to the people. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Kenyan youth understands this fact? Well, to be honest, they ought to understand because I think the unfortunate thing about the Kenyan youth is that they have constantly been manipulated by the usual old political class. Mm. And I think until when the youth of Kenya actually realize that they are actually Kenya today and Kenya tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I, I like giving a very tired example that when I was myself in, I maybe in nursery, primary, secondary, mm -hmm. up to university level, I kept on hearing this tired narrative that you are tomorrow's leaders. And mm -hmm. I've asked myself, when honestly is this tomorrow going to come? Tomorrow will never come. So my advice to the youth of Kenya is, mm -hmm. because your real life struggles are felt now not even today. Right now as we speak Ram with you, there mm. are people who are going to bed hungry. There are people who are so jobless, they don't even know what to do tomorrow. There are people who are struggling with uh, uh, school loans. There are people who are just struggling with, with health care, education. They are out of school. So our problems are felt now. Mm -hmm. Even today as we go to bed, people will be stressed. People are co contemplating suicide because the problems are felt today. So this nonsense of saying that you are tomorrow's leaders. The youth of this country needs to rise up, wake up, and take over the mantle of leadership. Mm -hmm. It is happening elsewhere in the world. It's only in Kenya where the youth are being assembled in Uhuru Park, told uh, uh, to pick stones, um, Machozi San Monday, <laughs> and, and, and Wazes are mm -hmm. sitting somewhere, sitting in their private members club, you know, sipping their finest of uh, drinks, either cognacs or wines and, and dining. But the youth, jobless as they are, frustrated mm -hmm. as they are, they are being told, let's go to the street. They're being used. That's not the kind of Kenya that I want. I want the Kenya where actually mm -hmm. the youth of this country shape the narrative and the future of this country. And it means that the environment that we have giving the constitution the power that it needs is still not yet conducive. It is it's still not yet because if you look at, for example, even people from like yourself from the media, uh. look at the political narrative in this country today. It has been reduced to either two or three individuals. Look at the hula baloo around constitution making in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, it is not even following 
the constitutional provision of processes prescribed in the constitution. You, you, you've been it, part... It, it, it talks about, for example, a handshake between two individuals, mm. Ahuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. And therefore, the entire country is chaperoned. Kama mbuzi ama ngombe, lazima mfote injia. Even though, you know, actually, this is not constitutional. Because there are, there are only two ways within which you can actually amend the constitution of Kenya. Either you go parliamentary initiative mm -hmm. or popular initiative. And I've seen all the political class in Kenya, uh, you know, almost wanting to kill each other because of two individuals. They are proposing or promoting a constitutional re a referendum on proposals that are not known. Because if I ask you, mm. if you look at the, the newspaper headlines, even the, news, uh, the, the headlines in the newspapers, the news items, talk about constitutional referendum on what? What, what, what is these changes that we are seeking actually to amend? And this is why for me, I, I, I draw a contrast between people who are calling for constitutional uh, amendments mm. with what I have been promoting in my party, Estadio Alliance Kenya, the Punguza Mizigo Kenya Initiative. Mm. You can today read the proposals of Tadwe Alliance Kenya, right from the need to strengthen devolution, address the question of overrepresentation. You know, you, uh, l let me quote what you said. Others, you, know. you, you said this, and I quote, for you to implement any constitution anywhere in the world, you must respect it, protect it, and uphold it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Are we doing that? It me First of all, the current political leadership, in my view, and I say this with tremendous respect, mm -hmm. They are, don't think they've even read or understood this constitution. Because if you have read and understood this constitution, mm. uh, Ram, mm. you must also know how do you begin the process of amending this constitution or seeking to amend this constitution. There is a threshold prescribed right from Article 255, 256, and 257. So any constitution builder or part of constitutional design mm. is that as you write a constitution, you must then inbuild mechanisms or now either you can review that constitution, mm -hmm. amend certain aspects of it, or rewrite it afresh. Of which we do okay. have that. We do have that we under do have the constitution. Those, but let me ask you, who apart from Third Way Alliance Kenya is following the provisions of amending the constitution? None. The discussions about constitutional change started. I mean, let me quote the president. He said, 10 years after our progressive constitution, the moment calls us to do better. Instead of a ceasefire document <coughs> that enforces a zero-sum game in which the winner takes it all, the moment calls us to create a constitutional order that will last long. Uh, That's what the president you said. You know, I don't want to discuss things in the abstract. Mm. I don't know why it has taken the president from March 9th when he and his political brother, Raila Odinga, decided that uh, they are going to initiate, uh, you know, BBI and the handshake towards a constitutional change. First of all, there is dishonesty there from the president. The In what pres sense? What do you mean dishonest? The president is not being honest. How? Because if you look at the founding pro propos propositions for BBI, there are about nine points. Mm -hmm. And the question is this, central, the overhacking, you know, objective of BBI is to establish what ails this country. Yes. That's the principle. Building uh, bridges. Well, I don't think they're building any bridges. They're actually breaking any existing bridges because BBI has divided this country more than united it. So that's, what is the solution? You know, that's a fact. According to your stand, what is the solution? So the solution it? is this. If you want to really build bridges in this country, uh -huh. if you want to really establish what ails this country, I would like to challenge the president to begin to table in parliament tomorrow, since he now controls parliament and, and, the, and, the, and the Senate. Because parliament today has become just a puppet. No, the, 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 the parliament is independent. No, it's not, not, it, this, not this parliament. It is? Not this parliament. You should just listen to the, to the debates. Listen to the debates, uh, President, President, uh, former Prime Minister, President, that's all. In fact, I'm wondering, eh, was there any point of us actually electing or nominating 416 members of Parliament? We should have just made Uhuru, Kenyatta, either Senate, and Raila Parliament, National Assembly, or vice versa. But that's unconstitutional. Yeah, it's unconstitutional, but that's the real politic in Kenya. The real politic in Kenya today that representatives of the people do not actually go to parliament to represent the people who send them there. They are going there to talk about party leadership. And mm -hmm. that's the problem. 
I, I have I have I have with this uh, call for 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 uh, for constitutional amendment. So you ask me the question: What mm. is the solution? Mm -hmm. The solution, and this is my challenge to the president of the Republic of Kenya, since you already have maybe one and a half years before you go. There is already established in a number of commissions what really hails Kenya. The TGRC report speaks about what ails this country. Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission mm -hmm. established issues to do with land clashes, tribal clashes and all that. There were gala massacres and there is, the list is very long. Table that report tomorrow. Let's debate it. Let's talk about compensation and reparation for the people who suffered. Hold on. Uh -huh. The Nungo Commission of inquiry into the illegal and irregular allocation of, of land. Okay. Okay? Mm. Table that report. Let's implement it. The Waki Commission on uh, post-election violence. The Krigler on uh, electoral malpractices. Mm. The Akiumi Commission. Mm. The, the Oko Commission. You know, there are many of them. And if you recall a letter that I wrote to the head of public service, Joseph Kinyo, Mm -hmm. I remember asking Joseph King, and I listed about nine reports from commissions of inquiry that actually established the problem in this country. So I will tell the president, let's stop this goalpost. Let's stop this pretense that uh, the problem in Kenya today is about uh, a, you know, finding a constitution that accommodates everybody. That's not true. In fact, why, do we, why don't we begin by the executive respecting, first and foremost, orders from the judiciary You've, you, this, you, is, this is the only government i think in the history of kenya that has disrespected court orders right from its first term to second term and that is undermining the constitution of kenya how can you prove that allegation well there are so many there are so many times for example why has the president refused to swear the 41 judges because the 41 judges are recruited by the judicial service commission which is an organ within an independent judiciary. The president is represented in the JSC by the attorney general and one other person, actually two other persons, that he himself appoints. If there was a problem with these 41 judges, why didn't these representatives of the president, including the attorney general, who is the chief legal advisor, raise those issues at the interview of these judges? That is disrespect for the judiciary. It is not rocket science's ram. I don't know. I hope you are in Kenya. Mm. That we have had the executive say we shall revisit. We mm. all know what shall revisit now means. Mm. That's how the, 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 the judiciary is being undermined. We have all seen the, the changes that are happening in parliament on the whims of the, of the, of the executive. Okay? So how can yeah. you say, to be honest, and let's be fair. Yes. You know, we want to have a very candid and uh, brutal conversation. Uh -huh. Give us your stand. Yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How can you then say, Ram, mm. actually that parliament is independent when it's actually being controlled by the executive? Well, that is your stand. It's not my stand. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, you, you, you've reminded me. Uh, but but, we, it, but let's, let's, let's be honest. Do, do, do we need to go back to the bomber's draft? Well, why do we need to go back to the bomber's draft? We already have a constitution. We have a 2010 constitution that specifies how this country must be governed. And that's why for me, I propose that if there are aspects of this constitution that are weak, let's then amend this constitution to strengthen. For example, let me give you an example of devolution. In seeking to mm. uh, strengthen devolution, I have proposed through Third Way Alliance Kenya that we need to do a number of things. Number one, let's increase allocation to the counties to at least 50 percent uh -huh. because today we are saying that we are <coughs> we are we are allocating 15 percent of our, our revenue to counties and that 85 percent remains to the national let's have a candid talk as kenyans what is the national well um if you we shall if you deconstruct the national yes deconstruct the national it is the people of kenya in all the 47 counties it is the people of Kenya in the 1450 wards, which is why for me as a, a party leader, mm. I have pro proposed and I've pushed for the idea that let's amend the constitution to increase more money to be allocated to the 47 counties of Kenya. And let's now devolve funds mm. beyond county headquarters. Okay, okay, okay Mishmio. Wait, 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 let me finish. And when we devolve funds beyond the county headquarters, mm. I want us to look at the 1450 wards of Kenya today. Yeah. And we begin to tick the box. That in each and every ward, I don't know which ward you come from, do you have clean water, electricity, 
health, good schools, you know, employment. Once we tick those boxes, Ram, mm -hmm. then we can talk about real and meaningful inclusivity in Kenya. We shall come to uh, that issue of about revel revenue allocation. But let's pull up a tweet by Professor Sam Ongeri mm -hmm. um, coming up. Th says there, the 2010 Kenya's constitution has failed to solve Kenya's worst problems. Chapter 6 of our constitution that would have <coughs> guaranteed integrity of leadership is not bearing fruits. Elected leaders are looting public resources and no action is being taken. Actually, I, I, I disagree with the good prof. Hmm. First of all, there is nothing wrong with cha chapter 6. Actually, actually, chapter 6, I will be honest with you, hmm. is, the G is one of the geniuses of Kenya's constitution, 2010. I've gone to a quite a number of countries to speak about the making of Kenya's constitution. And I keep on being asked this question. What is it that drove Kenyans to propose an entire chapter called leadership and integrity? In other words, Kenyans wanted a certain type and character of leader. Mm. Because one of the things that Kenyans told us at 2010, and I was on that, in the, uh, I was seated in that drafting table in a, in a, in a, in a, at the committee of experts headquarters. And Kenyans were saying one of the things that has really failed us as a country mm. is the leadership, is stewardship. There is no country anywhere in the world that will prosper without a certain stewardship. Okay? That's what we need as a country. That's what we need as a country. And that's why Kenyans said, mm. in our new constitution, let's prescribe the character and type of leader we want. But listen, what, does the leadership, what did the leadership do as soon as we actually promulgated this constitution? they actually began to kill chapter 6. Because in that chapter 6, we are saying, right from Article 73 all mm. the way to, I think, Article 79, mm. we say, Parliament shall pass legislation to bring this chapter into effect. But how did they kill it? But what, how did they kill it? They passed a legislation that actually undermined chapter 6 in almost its entirety. I'll give you another example. Article 104. Kenyans say that we now need to exercise the right to recall that when my member of parliament goes to parliament and just sleeps there and does nothing, mm. we want to recall that member of parliament mm -hmm. and fire that member of parliament. That is what, under the constitution. That's in the constitution. Yes. What, what, what did parliamentarians do? They passed a law that made it almost impossible for the electorate to actually recall them when they actually sleep on the job. Okay? I can go on and on. So, <laughs> amending the constitution... One of the ingredients of seeking to amend the constitution or the benefits mm. is to ask the question, what is the benefit that accrues to the public? Is amending the constitution making the lives of Kenyans better? And I want to challenge viewers who are watching this program today. Mm. I don't know where you will find the BBI proposals. Good luck if you ever find them. But look at Punguza Mizigo Kenya which are contained in thirdwayalliance.com. You will see the proposals we have put there, right from strengthening devolution, you know, sending more money to the counties, accountability, and all that, independence of institutions like the county assembly. Mm -hmm. You will see a direct benefit to the people of Kenya. You've it is not an advance of making the constitution to accommodate a few tribal leaders Mm. or to, to expand the executive, as I have heard. I mean, this I'm just speculating because this is, seems to be the pre predominant proposal mm. in, 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 in other some other quarters that talk about constitutional amendment. So constitutional amendment must have a direct benefit to the populace. And that is what is taking us to what the social contract is all about. The cost social contract yeah. is about the people of Kenya benefiting in equal measure from the highest order in the land. Which is not the constitution. Which, in, in your view, um, in your stand, we do not benefit equally as we speak. I don't think so. I don't think so because the constitution doesn't seem to serve the people of Kenya uh, uh, equ equitably. I mean, mm. equality is an ideal, but let's talk about equity. Equity okay. is about, for example, just addressing the, you know, the imbalances in society. Shouldn't we go for equity rather than equality? For example, I'll tell you what the, why, why I mentioned that. We should go for equ equity because equality is an ideal. It's diff difficult to achieve. Yes. For example, why are we not implementing Article 104 of the Kenya Constitution? 
that talks about the equalization fund it creates the equalization fund it has created the equalization fund so that you can now say the people of mandera or wajir or turkana or uh, tana river are for almost over 50 years not benefited from the national government in terms of for example look at road infrastructure electricity clean water you know uh, equitable uh, distribution of resources mm. Article 104 created the equalization fund so that we can bring regions that are unequal over time almost at par with each other. Uh -huh. So that Nairobi, what you what you enjoy in Nairobi, I should be able to enjoy it in my native county, Turkana. And that's and that is the and that's how we can truly build or create a nation state. And that's and, and that is exactly what is making us have a stalemate in the Senate. Yes, exactly what you're saying. We are having a stalemate in the Senate because of the character of our political leadership. A political leadership today that's advancing from one, one region saying that you must have one vote, one shilling, one man. Mm. That is disintegrating the country we call Kenya. It is actually heightening ethnic tensions. Because I can also say today, coming from Turkana, that we never benefited in the past because of political dominance by a certain group mm -hmm. or a region in this country, the rest of us were marginalized. Today, there is no region or county in Kenya that can clearly say that we are being marginalized because the redistribution, distribution of resources or revenue in this country, national revenue in this country is equitable. It's based on your needs. And that's why today for the first time, for the last almost uh, seven years now, Every county in Kenya, Ram, mm. receives billions of Kenya shillings. Now, how you use those billions to benefit your people is the other story. But you cannot blame the constitution. There is equity. So for but me, in my native county, Turkana, uh -huh. I do not see a reason why we can no longer have at least water in each and every village with almost 13 or 12 billion that we are getting every every year that is the stand of honorable dr ekuru okot let's take a short break we'll be back remember give us your take in regards to this discussion what do you think the hashtag is the stand ke we are live on our website www.y254.co.ke uh, the hashtag is the stand ke at y254 channel at ramaguko at eo court and remember, we are also live on Facebook. Let's take that break. We'll be back in a bit with Meshimiwa himself. Mm -hmm.